Welcome, one and all, to the world's one and only Kraus Galleries of Living Isles. Featuring, at this one and only sneak preview, inside the Mona Lisa Anu Atrium, La Giaconda, as yours truly, Richard Kraus, painted and titled the piece. Mona Lisa Anu, in divine hands now. 24 by 36, oil on canvas. A timely makeover of Dean Da Vinci's masterpiece, now holding Sparky and Pip Krause, but still smiling about the same catastrophic mindset that still plagues planet Earth 500 years after she was first painted. Mona, of course you know who I am and what I'm going to ask you. Of course I know that you're the magnificent Nat King Cole who sings so beautifully about me. And of course I know the question you're going to ask me. The same question men and women have been wanting to ask me for centuries. Why am I smiling? I'm actually smiling for two reasons. I do know the main reason you're smiling because you're secretly in love with Leonardo, who painted you 500 years before our dear friend Krauss did. Close, but unfortunate for you, Nate, we're not playing horseshoes or hand grenades. At any rate, the first reason I'm smiling is because I'm carrying one of Leonardo's little baby hand grenades around inside of me right now. What are you talking about? I'm pregnant with Leonardo's baby, and I'm smiling because he doesn't know anything about it. And if I have anything to say about it, he never will know anything about it. Never? But you're already married to Francisco La Giaconda. No, I'm not, Nate. I mean, Nat. At any rate, the second reason I'm smiling is the same reason I've been smiling every time I've been around Leonardo and his brainiac buddies even before I was pregnant. I'm grinning at the dastardly insolence of their know-it-all attitudes. And that's why I'm not ever going to let Leonardo get his hands on this little brainiac I'm carrying around inside me. I understand. Is it because you're not married to Leonardo? No, of course not, because we are married. My first husband, Francisco, vanished into thin air after he got to know Leonardo. Vanished? Why? Because Francisco, God rest his soul, was stupid enough to feel totally inferior to Leonardo and his seemingly brilliant friends. Francisco was too short-sighted to realize that even I, his buxom but traditionally brainless wife, was even smarter than all Leonardo's clan put together. Smart in what way? Because you know Leonardo is considered one of the, if not the, most brilliant humans to ever walk the earth. But let's get back to the first reason you're smiling, Mona. Because you're pregnant but not going to tell Leonardo about it if you're legally married and everything. Because big Leonardo would try to mold little Leonardo in his own image. The image of a surly man who believes that humans can build machines to do everything for them and who believes the entire planet should just be one big giant city. I see where you're going, Mona dear, but I'll ask the question anyway, just for the sake of argument. What's wrong with magnificent machines and humongous cities? If Leonardo and his kind have their way, at some time in the not-too-distant future, machines will be doing everything for humans, and we will all perish from flaccid boredom in giant theme park cages called super cities. Well, at least then the non-human animals can take back their planet. There won't be any non-human animals left if Leonardo and his high-flying inventor buddies have their way. So then why in the world are you smiling? Because Leonardo and his short-sighted Da Vinciites ain't gonna have their ethnocentric way.
And how are we going to stop them, Miss Mona Lisa? Your magnificent and determined voice is going to do that, Mr. Nat, the King Cole, Jr. If you say so, Mona Lisa, I knew. Krauss has painted you so beautifully. I'll believe anything you say and do anything you ask. But not to change the subject, but before we part ways today, how about telling us all the names of those two handsome pooches you're holding in your divine hands? Sparky and Pep, and they're both as ageless as they are brave and determined, and as ageless and determined and brave as you are, my friend Nat, the king. Well, thank you for those words of encouragement, Mona. It has really been an extreme pleasure to visit with you and Sparky and Pip today. But I just find it hard to believe that the Pope of the Church granted you dispensation to marry Leonardo when you were still married to a man who had just very recently disappeared. Did Leonardo give the Pope some sort of special gift to help persuade him to grant the dispensation? You hit the nail on the head, Nate. As a matter of fact, I'll show you the gift Leonardo gave the Pope. You see, Leonardo designed a honeymoon gown for me himself. And of course, he painted a portrait of me wearing it. And he loaned the portrait to the Pope for a while. That explains everything, Mona. Not quite everything, Nathan. At any rate, you have a very big job ahead in convincing the world's big shot human geniuses how foolish and malignant they've been in shaping the world in their own short-sighted, unnatural image. With a little help from my friends, it shall be done. But before we part ways today, on a more personal note, allow me to say, sweet Mona, that you are certainly the most beautiful creature in the world, wearing that honeymoon outfit that Leonardo so masterfully designed for you. Thank you so much, King Cole, and thank you for reminding me of how Leonardo's scientific mind explains beauty. He believed everything, everybody sees, and experiences can be broken down into cold, hard numbers and equations and lines of geometry. He even tried to explain my beauty with an illustration he carved into this marbled granite tablet. He titled the piece the so-called work of art, the geometry of beauty. I do think the tablet is beautiful in its own right, Mona, but I agree with you that many things in our world can never be explained by the human mind. And humans need to accept that and make the best of the world we were naturally born into. Rather than conquer Mother Nature, we need to live in harmony with her. My daughter always used to tell me, Pops, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. If you try to, you only ruin it. I agree with your daughter 100%, Nat. But sadly, mankind has almost already ruined the world. It didn't need to be fixed when men crawled up on the two legs, but it sure needs to be fixed now. 500 years ago, I could see what the future, including even today, was going to be like. That's why Leonardo made me his wife, because he thought I was a prophet, and he wanted to analyze how my mind worked. Of course, he was never able to. For example, when I scribed a poem called, in the year 2525, on the back side of his so-called Geometry of Beauty tablet, he thought I was crazy, downright Looney Tunes, as you would say today. You're certainly not talking about the same lyrics Zager and Evans recorded in 1969. I sure am. I wrote those words almost 500 years before Z and E were born. But of course, I left it for their marvelous minds to translate my Italian poem into English and to compose the beautiful music and to perform the still prophetic song for all the world, a world that sadly learned no lesson from it. At least not at that time, little more than 40 years ago. Maybe four decades later, today, they'll pay more attention. I can only hope. I hope so too, Nate, because maybe then I can quit smirking at human audacity and insolence and start truly smiling. 
smiling at the wonder of a world on the road back to its natural self. <laughs> Just in case nobody recognizes me, I'm the legendary Leonardo da Vinci. And I've traveled here through time to say that maybe, just maybe, man and woman can even go beyond just reducing their negative impact and can actually contribute to the well-being of all species in a positive way by reducing the predatory practices of all species by incorporating some sort of worldwide caretaker dominion policy as so perceptively suggested by our overbaked master of ceremonies. That said, I apologize for my short-sightedness 500 years ago. I was smart, but not smart enough to see that as technology increased, so would the human population have to increase to man the new machines and their assembly lines. And once the population increased to a certain point, there were too many people to survive without being dependent on technologies and without bastardizing all the land and natural resources which once enabled non-human animals to roam free. It became and continues to be a vicious circle, technology and humans feeding on one another neither now able to exist without the other. For seven billion humans cannot survive without technology, and such a complex technology and such a complex and such a complex technology cannot survive without seven billion humans, both destroying the non-human world, both humans and technology. The only possible solution, barring some Armageddon sort of catastrophe, is a gradually controlled reduction in world population which will take many years, and untold sacrifice by humans of their ill-gotten creature comforts and sense of superiority. Enough said. I repeat, so there will be no doubt I apologize for my short-sighted worship of machines and the empty lives they spawned for us humans, and the tortured life they made for non-humans. You're forgiven, Leonardo. Maybe, if we start population reduction now, just maybe all the lyrics of Zegar and Evans' song won't need to become a reality, and I can smile for real. <laughs> Everything this old earth can give And he ain't but back nothing Whoa, whoa Man has cried a billion tears For what he never knew Now man's reign is through Mona smile wide. Far out, man. A one man, two dog project. <laughs>